In my observation, there is a significant number of Warframe players out there who have yet to start, let alone complete the new war, and it turns out, in a lot of cases, it's because they couldn't be bothered to grind for a necromech which is required. Some players may not even know where to start in order to acquire a Void Rig or Bone Widow, so this guide aims to help with that. A couple of quick disclaimers, RNG is gonna dictate how much time you'll spend farming for necromech parts, and let's face it, the fastest way to get a mech is just to buy it for the 375 plats that it goes for. Or if you don't wish to spend any platinum, it is possible to trade for the parts on places like Warframe Market. They seem to be going for really cheap as of making this video. Just keep in mind that you'll also need a scintillant, which is non-tradable, to build the capsule. And considering the fact that one of the best ways to farm for a scintillant happens to be the same for farming necromech parts, I can see some players not minding a bit of grind to save on plats. And if you're looking to trade items or recruit some help for farming in Warframe, frame, consider joining the Discord server. Invite link is in the description. Most of you watching this video are probably experienced Warframe players, but if you're really new then it's gonna take a long while to even get started with this guide as you must have completed the War Within and Heart of Deimos quests. The Necroloid Syndicate will then be accessible to you while in operator form and is located at the northmost back door in the Necrolisk. There you'll find Lloyd selling blueprints for the Necromech and one would think, wow that was easy, all I gotta do is just fish and mine for the resources right? Well yes, but then you also need these so called damaged Necromech parts which drop from enemy necromechs that spawn in isolation vault bounties. The number of necromechs that spawn in the vaults correlate with the mission's tier level and if you haven't faced them before, those mechs can be pretty brutal especially if you're going in solo unprepared against all three. Now here's where I got a bit conflicted in making this guide, I wanted to tailor the build suggestions to players that don't have all the high end gear, but I'm also very well aware that you're not going to have a great time walking into one of those vaults with a Scano wielding Excal for example. I just need you guys to understand that I had to make some compromises with my setup in order to not make it almost impossibly difficult to attain for a large part of the player base, so just take my suggestions as mere guidance and feel free to experiment, see what works best for you. Since we're going to be farming for parts that drop from enemies, I've decided to go with Necros for his Desecrate ability to maximize our chances. He's not exactly optimal for fighting Necromex, but with some practice, you'll be just fine. I'm some random Warframe YouTuber who makes videos for views, you can totally trust me. Some things you should definitely know about Necromex is that they are mostly invulnerable. You'll first have to take out their arms by shooting at the bulky shoulders and then continue to do damage to them by shooting at the glowing spot on their backs. For the inexperienced, you may be tempted to bring along a strong melee weapon, but close combat is probably not a good idea. Bone Widows aren't gonna like it when you invade their personal space and will start whacking with that big scary sword that does a truckload of damage. Necromex also possess an invisible short range field that nullifies Warframe and Operator abilities but can be affected by Magus Lockdown. Honestly, I don't know if the nullifying field even works half the time because in my experience I found it to be really inconsistent. Right, let's take a look at that Necros then. The first thing I did is subsume Korra's Ensnare in place of Soul Punch. This will be used to hold the enemy Necromex in place for long enough to at least take down their arms. Keep in mind that Ensnare won't stop the mechs from rotating their upper bodies to protect their backs, which is kinda annoying. Of course Prime Sure Footed here is not necessary, I just got tired of getting knocked down by the random juggernauts and roly polies. Creeping Terrify however is required for crippling the enemy Necromex so vault runs don't turn into suicide missions. You'll see what I mean. As for weapons, I relied on a Rattleguts kit gun and my beloved Play QR Zaw to take down the infested swarms. Now a lot of players out there will recommend a Strofa for killing the Necromex, which if you want to go for that then that's totally fine. I personally don't like the Strofa because I'm a Redeemer Prime fanboy. Uh, with that said, I'm not going to use either of those. After much testing, I've decided to go with an Imperator Vandal modded for radiation and as much crit damage as possible. Maybe it isn't as effective as some of the meta setups out there, but I've found it to work really well, especially against Bone Widows, which for some reason are way tankier than the Void Rigs. Finally, for companions, you could bring an Adarza Kavat equipped with sharpened claws, though I've never seen it strip a Necromex armor myself, so I can't say if it actually works. Alternatively, you could bring a Chessa Kubro equipped with Retreat for a chance at additional loot. My approach when fighting Necromex is to hit them with Ensnare and Terrify from medium range as to avoid the invisible nullifying field, then use the Imperator Vandal to quickly destroy both of the mech's arms before targeting its back. One thing I found is that if you die at this point with your Arc Gun equipped, both your Arc Gun and Arc Gun Deployer become unusable, and it's not even due to cooldown, and at one time I even lost access to my secondary. This could be a bug, but if it's actually some sort of weird intended design, do let me know down in the comments. Speaking of intended design, 
The other Bone Widows can be incredibly annoying to fight as they do tend to back themselves into a corner or wall to protect their backs and even with the 80% slow from Creeping Terrify, they can still rotate their upper bodies effectively to avoid damage. One way to deal with this is Magus Lockdown but that only lasts for 4 seconds and ideally you don't want to switch into Operator Mode at any point when fighting mechs so use it sparingly. Also, I've noticed that the Necromex bodies, once killed, quickly sink through the floor or despawn. So I'm not sure if turning on Desecrate after the fact would actually work, as there's no visible corpse. Just to be safe, make sure Desecrate is active before heading into the vault to fight the Necromex. And remember, don't get too close. There are dozens of more tips and tricks I could mention, but unfortunately it would make the video way too long. The important thing to keep in mind when fighting against Necromex is to employ some sort of temporary stun to keep them in place so you can take out the arms as quickly as possible. Then you'll need to basically DPS your way to killing the thing before it picks its arms back up and comes for revenge. <laughs> An angry bone widow is a dangerous bone widow. If you have any questions or suggestions for better builds, please feel free to leave them down in the comments or join the Discord server where I'm probably going to be giving away ribbons by the time this video goes live. Links are in the description. I'll see you there.